Hey guys, Pete Ramsey here, HVAC Greatness. Continuing that sales conversation for your HVAC salespeople, it doesn't matter if you're a comfort advisor, a comfort consultant, a selling technician, or maybe you're the owner who happens to sell, you must be able to handle this particular issue. You see, people buy from people that they know people that they like, and people that they trust. Well, those first two are easy to build, but that third one, it takes a little bit more strategy. So let's talk about seven of the very top ways that you can build trust between you and your prospective client. Okay, so let's talk about way number one. Way number one is you must demonstrate industry knowledge. Now, you might be the most knowledgeable in the HVAC industry to have walked in their door. But they don't know that. They can't read your mind. You can't just walk in and have that confidence. That's not enough. I mean, that helps, but you must be able to demonstrate that. So what is industry knowledge? Industry knowledge is all about the industry outside. They may ask you about R22. What's the deal with R22? You need to know about the R22 2020 you know, end. It's not being produced anymore. What's happening with R410A? Did you know that's on the chopping block next? What's going to be the potential replacements? These are conversations that you need to be able to answer and demonstrate the fact that you are an expert in the HVAC industry. Next is the ability to demonstrate product knowledge. Guys, don't offer a product that you can't fully explain, specifically how the consumer will benefit from this product. You need to know your products inside out. Next, it's important that you demonstrate market knowledge. You need to know what your competition is doing. You need to know what your competition is saying to your consumers out there, your local prospects that you might be selling to one day because they're going to bring up issues. And if you're prepared, you can easily handle any issues that come up brought up by your competition. Now, speaking of your competition, don't fall into that snare where they ask you, what about ABC company over there? Never say anything negative, right? Your answer might be something like, you know, I really take a lot of pride in what I do. I try to be the very best at what I do, and I chose the company where I work very carefully. I feel like I work for the best company out there. And then move on, right? So don't speak negative about your local market's competition, but be informed about what they're doing. Next is to be honest, and honesty extends over into lying by omission. When you know something and you don't share it with your customer, in essence, you're lying, and if that comes back later in the conversation, you're gone right? You must be an honest person because those first three steps, you've demonstrated trustworthiness in your knowledge. Now we need to demonstrate trustworthiness in your integrity as an honest person. So be very careful. And when you present things to be honest and forthright in every area possible. Next is to be direct. Now, this doesn't mean to be rude or condescending. You must be direct and speak directly to the issues. Now, that's difficult for some of us more passive type salespeople, but be direct. If they ask you a question, just tell them the truth. They, they're big boys and big girls. They can handle it, right? But, you know, be tactful, but be direct in everything that you do as you go through your process. So next, you want to be even-handed when you're communicating with your customer. And by even-handed, we, we want to mean you don't want to take an extreme position on anything. Right? If they ask you about, you know, this other brand, you go, oh, that's that brand stinks, right? You know, we, we have to balance the pros and the cons in our conversation so that we can display to the customer that things aren't as black and white as they appear on, on television marketing and advertising, right? In reality, you as the expert can communicate all of these to them and this builds your trustworthiness in their eyes as well. Finally, and this is the big one, you must listen. Close it. Remember, you got one of these and two of these for a reason. Slow down and listen. Our brain, as you can see over here, will process about 500 to 800 words per minute. That's fast. Now, your customer is over there speaking about 150 to 300 words per minute. That's slow. So you're going to be you're, you're going to have that tendency to jump in there and, and, and over. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. You know, and just finish their sentence and keep moving. Slow down. Listen and then repeat back what they said to you. Let them know that you're paying attention, okay? Because when you walk in that door, they may have the perception that HVAC is all the same because it appears to be the same, and that's why they base it on price. But you can be the differentiator. You see, it's not what you sell, it's how you sell it. So be the differentiator in your market and be well-versed on all of these issues and you'll have much more success than you ever have in the past. Okay, Pete Ramsey here, HVAC Greatest. I hope these tips helped you out. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.